Hello everybody and welcome to another Community Fortress. This is the Golden Mountain of Insanity. Uh, this fortress was sent in on the Discord by Horigant. If you would like to send in a fortress for us to have a look at on this show, then send it in on my Discord in the DF Save Sharing Room. Now this fortress is located on a haunted glacier and is currently under siege, so we're actually going to get to play out the siege a little bit. So that should be a little bit of fun. But... Before we do any of that, we're going to, of course, have to do the fortress tour. Now, this is a surface fort, sort of, but also kind of an underground fort. And as you can see, it's um, it's been busy. There's a lot of, uh, well, sleeping people outside. They, they won't ever wake up. It, it's fine. But we do have these beautiful gold walls on the outside, hence the Golden Mountain of Insanity. And this rather large human siege, which is currently entering the fortress. There is, of course, this uh, singing metal road uh, coming in through the entryway that goes down uh, into the fortress itself, from what I can tell, along this long road up to this locked drawbridge. Right past that is a trade depot, and that then leads into the main fortress. Now, if I zoom out a little bit, we can get a bit of a view of it. This is, of course, a vault. Now, I should mention that this fortress is 28 years old, so the creator of it has been working on it for quite some time. We're going to drop down a few layers, and uh, this is the actual combat layer. So we do have, uh, well, several little maniacal machines here of... Uh, violence, shall we say. We have uh, these lovely, lovely, lovely uh, uh, magma pumps that pump the lava up against these bridges, and then these bridges, um, if this lever is pulled, uh, collapse. So something I'm going to have to do at some point is I'm going to have to figure out how to lock this thing down because there's this magma chamber lockdown lever. We're going to have to figure out how to lock this thing down as well as um, then drop them down into here for the um, aforementioned crushing, or of course uh, to be removed from existence by these uh, grizzly bears and war dogs. Now, for the main fortress tour itself, we should go back down to these trap doors, which kind of move down a little ways, a little ways, a little ways, and these are going to lead down into the digging levels. And as you can see, there is this golden uh, lava pump stack here, which goes through multiple cavern layers, including uh, several uh, forgotten beast friends. Um, and, uh, you know, your, your, your pretty typical mason shops, your, your forges, your, your lava setups down here. Um, this is where they're pumping the majority of the lava from, and this goes all the way down into the caverns. Now, there is, uh, some water at the bottom of these stairs, I guess an oopsie happened at some point, and they are beginning to dig into these, in, in, into this, uh, uh, what, what's it called? A uh, spire of candy right there. But... If we go back up to the fortress itself, the rest of the fortress is actually in that pyramid on the surface. So right here um, uh, uh, is the kind of combat layer that we were talking about earlier. At the back here is a bunch of ballistas, which I'm about to fire off um, once we get an opportunity. Uh, there's, of course, you know, the prisons here, and there's um, a, a, a vampire who lives in there. I'm sure they are a wavwi individual. Uh, and then here we have a, a bunch of water wheels, which are, um, I think, powered. They do not appear to be. Oh, nope, they are powered. Now it's to a question of figuring out how are they powered? Where's that water coming from? Where is it going, I might even ask? I'm actually not sure how these are powered. I was, ex I was expecting there to be some minecart shenanigans down there. Of course, there are uh, all these tame giant grizzly bears, which are uh, adorable to see, as well as various other livestock. Um, and then we can move up. So this is kind of the artifact layer. One layer up is uh, a bunch of barrackses as well as dining halls. Uh, in the center here, we have a very grand office for the queen and, of course, king. Uh, and then over here, we have our uh, various temples and our, of course, the crystalline pumpkin, a wonderful name for a tavern and a grand dining hall right next to that. If we move up layers, uh, we can begin to see even more stuff. We have virtually what seem is seemingly endless gold uh, surrounded by many a temple. Of course, an above-ground view down into the, uh, te the, the temple down there. Um, and then as we move up, we get the bedroom layers, which are beautiful. They kind of look like uh, like a micro fort, like a single tile fort, but that's because it's it's all like built inside of this glacier in this pyramid. Um, and then as we move up, we can just see the slowly shrinking bedroom layers. Up here is a layer filled with uh, what... I, like, I, I've, okay, so I'm just going to straight up ask this question. I have no idea how they got so much singing metal. Um, singing metal is like godly metal, meaning it's it's the metal that's melted down from angels. So I have no idea how they've acquired so much of it. Like, they're either duping it or, like, summoning it into existence, or they've just, like, discovered some incredible resource that 
I couldn't even begin to imagine. But regardless, that is an impressive amount of godly uh, resources right there. Uh, there's, of course, a crushing spot for crushing things that need to be crushed. Um, and then uh, here is just this beautiful little lava setup. And then right up here is the forges in the pyramid. As we continue to move on up, there are uh, small spots for training archery, assuming you can make that work. And then here are some guild halls, which all look lovely. As we continue to move up, uh, there is uh, even more guild halls, of course, more ready to go. I love the pattern here. Uh, and then this kind of pinwheel design of offices, bedroom, offices, dining hall, and bedroom. Um, and then that continues all the way up to the tombs for the grand nobles, who, when they sleep, they never wake. And uh, then, of course, the top of the pyramid itself. Now, this is actually one of the few fortresses where I have something to play with. So we are going to fly down to the actual combat area. Now this, of course, is right here. So I guess the only natural thing to do here is to fire at will with these ballista and see what happens. I'm going to move the game forward by a few turns and we're going to watch these ballista as they fly up across. Let's see how many of them make it. There they go. Let's see how well we can follow these. Eh. Ooh, I, uh, uh, uh. And uh, we appear to have made a singing metal shield. Well, that seems to have gone rather well. Uh, we've definitely done some damage. Um, let's see if the dwarves are set up and ready to go again yet. All right, well, we've got one dwarf loading a ballista. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out where this is connected right here. Uh, we got this magma chamber locked down, so I'm going to pull that lever real quick. Uh, there's another ballista arrow flying right in here. Uh, let's follow this one and see how it does. Flies forward, flies forward. Uh oh, I think we actually just ended the siege with that one volley of arrows, actually. Yeah, it certainly seems that way. So we are, <laughs> we are now... Oops, I appear to have lost the spot. We are now going to... Uh, well, I guess finish pulling this lever right here, which is now set to be pulled. And uh, then I'm going to figure out how these are connected and see if I can turn this whole thing on. Because who doesn't want to turn this whole thing on? I mean, I certainly do. There's got to be like something connected to this somewhere. Is it right here, maybe? Because, ah, there we go. The magma chamber pumps. Let's, let's start this pumping. Right there, so. Doors aren't shut yet. I probably should just set these to halt and not keep firing because, uh, well, the enemy siegers are no longer there. Okay, so we've got the bridge up. Sweet. Let's see when these start pumping because that next bit should be turning on in a moment. Man, there's so much going on in this fort. All right, well, it's right here, so let's jump back. Oh, okay, there it is. There's a dwarf coming to to, to uh, give that a pull. The other thing that I want to do is I want to get a dwarf to come and give this a pull. Now, I am playing this in the experimental branch, and um, I, I would like to note that I do actually have the experimental multi-threading run on right now, so the game is actually running quite well. We are sitting at, you know, 62 frames per second overall, which I think is actually kind of awesome for the amount that's actually going on in this fort. Um, oh, looks like uh, we've got uh, some zombies coming back. I guess that's what the lava here is for, is to deal with the uh, unfortunately resurrecting zombies. All right, so... The gears are turning. All right, so we are now pumping lava into here. So now we are simply waiting for this final lever to get pulled. And there it goes. And then, of course, we can't see the lava because it doesn't show on top of the bridges, but you can see the bodies burning, so you know that it's working. And um, I think I may have just crashed the game. Well, that's awkward. I'm going to get the fortress started back up, and uh, then we'll continue. I would say that that is an artifact of me playing in the Unstable branch, and there is a lot going on there. I just want to say that that is a very cool defense setup that you've got there. I, unfortunately, don't ever really use ballista arrows, I, I, I find them to be a little bit, not, not, not OP or anything, but just not really my style of things. But this is, like, I would just go with the lava and call that call it a day, right? 
But uh, this is just such a neat little setup, and it's so cool to be able to fire these off. So thank you very much to Horrigant for sending in this fortress for me to have a look at on this show. I think that this is an absolutely awesome setup you have here, and I think that there is definitely a lot of incredible work and design effort put into this fort. So I am flattered that I got the opportunity to have a look at it, and I hope that you enjoyed seeing it. If you'd like to see more fortresses like this, check out this YouTube channel. There is a huge playlist of them, and it probably wouldn't crash if I wasn't on the experimental branch. Definitely check out the experimental branch, though the experimental multi-threading stuff is really cool and uh, definitely making the game run better than ever before. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you would like to support me and the stuff I do here directly, you can do that via my Patreon. That's patreon.com slash blindirl. And if you would like to check out my Twitch streams that I do, you can find me at twitch.tv slash blindirl. Someone was asking me about uh, making a Amazon store affiliate thing, and honestly, I don't think you should be buying stuff from Amazon anyway. So if you really want to support me by buying stuff, you could buy a mug over at my merch store. Link is also in the description. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one.